I'm wearing this Chuck Norris shirt today for a reason because if you make one of these seven mistakes on your seven string guitar, Chuck's gonna come find you and it's just not gonna be good. All right, guys, I'm going to show you seven mistakes not to make on your seven string guitar. So let me just warn you ahead of time. Some of this is obviously it's going to be kind of comical, uh, but I'm pretty much at least 50 percent, maybe 70 percent serious about every single thing that I'm about to go over with you. So take it to heart, but also know that I'm 30 percent joking. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share something with you that's going to surprise and maybe even disappoint a lot of you. But Hang around for that because I'll give you a chance to give me your thoughts on that as well. All right, before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and ding that little bell so you'll get notified when I put out cool videos like this one. Mistake number one that most seven string guitar players make, especially when they first get their seven string, is hanging on that lowest note possible and not really going too many other places. Now we've all heard those bands and I'm not even going to bother naming the bands but they pretty much play every song in the same freaking key and of course it's the lowest note possible. Now not only seven string guitars are guilty of this, a lot of metal and most of the new metal bands are kind of guilty of this. Like every song on the album is literally in the same key, it starts with that same note and just everything kind of runs together and sounds same same there's no variety you know i mean sometimes it's good to have the same stuff like if you had a really good steak tonight you might want the same thing tomorrow night because it's just really good but even with steak you're gonna get tired of it after a while you need some variety you might want some pork or chicken i guess i'm kind of hungry right now because i'm talking about food but you get what i'm saying though like you want some variety in your music and in the riffs you're playing which leads me to mistake number two Mistake number two is ignoring the rest of the strings, and I'll expand beyond that, the frets and notes on your guitar. See, the problem with a lot of seven string players is, if you think about it, having that extra string is supposed to give us more options. It's supposed to like expand what we play and how we play, but the problem is we actually let that restrict our playing. And what I mean by that is because we become so obsessed playing the lowest freaking notes all the freaking time that that's all we play. We're just in that one little area on the fretboard. You know, this area right here. We don't go here or here or here or anywhere else. We're just on those super low notes all the time. So here's what happens when you do that. You start to suck really, really bad when you have to play something that involves those other strings and other frets. You see, playing heavy, you're used to that heaviest string, that we'll call that the seventh string. You might play the sixth because you're playing power chords, and every now and then you might play that third string as well. You might venture away from that and hit that one too. You've got four other strings there though, guys, that you need to play, and you've got other frets. You know, you don't have to play the lowest notes possible all the time, so expand. Play those other strings. They're there. They want your attention. <laughs> Mistake number three, and this sort of ties in with one and two, is not riffing. See, the problem with us seven string guitarists, especially in the beginning, we just become obsessed. We're so obsessed with that heavy note, those low notes. I won't even say heavy, they're just lower notes. Low doesn't always equate to heavy, by the way. That's just a side note, but did I say note? Yeah, the pun was intended. Anyway, we're so fixated on those low notes that we forget to move our fingers around, our fretboard hand. We forget to move that around a little bit. So don't just play the heavy, heavy, heavy stuff all the time. 
you know, riff, expand those fingers, you know, put them in different places on the fretboard, play different strings, but move them around more importantly, and play some riffs. Don't just play the heavy stuff for power chords. You've got to move around, you know, otherwise you just become stagnant and you start becoming less of a musician and more of just a low note guitar player. You don't want to be that guys, you want to be a true musician so learn to do other things and get away from the heavy stuff. There's a time and place for it but the time and place is not all the time. <laughs> Mistake number four. You guys are gonna hate me for this one and you're probably gonna like leave me bad comments here, but I I'm just gonna say it anyway, guys. Don't gent, seriously. Or at least don't gent all the time. Uh, you know, I didn't even know what gent was until like recently. And I'll tell you kind of an embarrassing story. I actually put out a video on how to gent a long time ago, maybe two years ago, something like that. I'll put it up here and I'll leave a link in the description of this video so that way you can go comment on it and tell me how wrong I was putting this video out there and I was wrong because I didn't know what gent was but I'm teaching you how to gent in this video. <laughs> Here's the thing, back in my era, like this is like back in the late 80s, early 90s when I started playing guitar, I used to hear that term thrown around a lot, people gent and I guess I confused gent with the noise because we would do that in class, you know, we're sitting there, we're bored in math class, I really sucked at most, uh, you know, subjects anyway. So instead of paying attention, we're, we've got these metal riffs in our head, like Master of Puppets or something off of uh, the Rust album, you know, and we're sitting there, so I confused that sound with meaning gent, especially when I saw how it was spelled. So yeah, I put out a video about a year or two ago on how to gent, and it's actually a really good lesson. Again, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Anyway, my point is, I know what gent is now, and I've, I've heard it, and it's like, okay, that's great if that's your style. Uh, it's not my personal style, but if that's your style, that's fine. Just don't do it all the time, because they, uh, it's just, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating to see seven string guitar players just get hung up on this one little tiny boxed in style of playing just because they've got that extra string. So I don't want to say don't gent, just don't do it all the time. Give it a break, give it a rest, and play some other stuff. Do something else on your seven string guitar. Mistake number five. You guys like my cool green wedding ring, by the way? It's pretty awesome. Mistake number five is not playing solos on your seven string guitar. Now, let's back up for a minute. You may be saying, but Jason, I'm just a rhythm player, dude. I'm, I don't play leads. I don't really care to play leads. I don't play guitar solos, or I'm not really that good at them. Here's the thing, guys. Even if you're not the lead player in your band that you're in, or your project, or whatever, or even if you think that you're not a lead guitarist, you play guitar you kind of are a lead guitarist as well because listen you don't want to be just a rhythm guitar player or just a lead player or just a metal guitar player you want to be a guitarist in fact take it a step further you want to be a true musician and that's what i'm showing you how to do here so even if you don't play leads if it's not your forte or even if you just don't really care to play guitar solos i encourage you to play some leads on your seven string guitar. And here's why, because this is going to expand your knowledge of the fretboard even more. Because when you play guitar solos, you're gonna be down here in this area. Or even this area right here. And sometimes you might even play leads up here. And 
as you just heard, I didn't play anything super complex because I'm not doing this video to show out. This is like a, this is an educational video, so I hope you're paying attention. No, guys, but it just, you know, it just expands your knowledge of the fretboard and it also gets you comfortable, more comfortable with your seven string instrument, not just playing in that upper area, the low notes that we're talking about, but playing all over the fretboard. You just become one with your guitar, like the Metallica one. Mistake number six. And guys, I'm probably gonna catch a lot of crap for this mistake here that I'm about to share with you. In fact, I'm probably gonna catch a lot of crap from this entire video, but remember, just know that I'm 70% serious and 30% of this is kind of comical, so that percentage may change as I go on. Who knows? Anyway, if you think about leaving a bad, nasty comment, just say, but dude, I love you, man. Guys, there is absolutely no reason to down tune or drop tune a seven string guitar, okay? If you get a seven string, look, that B string, that B note, I'm sorry, if that's not heavy enough, or I shouldn't say heavy, because remember, there's a difference between heavy and just playing a low note, huge difference, okay? But if you're not satisfied with that B note, then stop playing guitar and just go buy a freaking tuba or something because you can hit some pretty good low notes on a tuba. I mean, you get really get down there. I mean, that's like death metal tuba. How cool would that be? This is just my opinion, okay? Mistake number six here is just my personal opinion. And here's why I don't recommend that you down tune or drop tune or mess with the tunings on a seven string guitar because everything we just talked about, those mistakes, Prior to you know mistake number six here, this is going to cause you to make those mistakes. I promise you, because down tuning, what are we doing? We're fixated on a low note. You've already got a B string, guys. That's that's plenty low enough. And the other problem with down tuning or drop tuning or whatever tuning is the lower you go like that, guys, the more muddy of a tone and sound you're going to have. See, here's the one of the problems with playing seven string to begin with is. I don't care what pickups you have or what setup you have, your seven string guitar is just not going to sound as tight as notes played on a six string guitar. That's just the thing. It's already kind of on that edge of kind of sounding muddy and losing that clarity. If you drop tune it or down tune it, then you're going to lose that clarity even further. And Seriously, what's the point of drop tuning or down tuning? Again, don't be fixated on the low note. Be more fixated on just playing, playing your instrument and being diverse in your instrument. Mistake number seven. This is the last mistake. First mistake, last mistake. Mistake number seven is not playing six string songs on your seven string guitar. So chances are when you first started playing guitar, you probably learned mostly six string songs, right? You know, you learned your chords, uh, you know, your open chords, you probably learned some scales and blah, blah, blah. And then you started learning your favorite songs. Maybe you learned some Guns N' Roses or Metallica or Megadeth or Scorpions, Dawkin, whatever you learned. Of course, I'm, you know, <laughs> naming off all the cool stuff I learned. Like, I don't know, been a long time ago now. But you get what I'm saying. A lot of the stuff you probably learned in your initial phases of playing guitar, because most of us don't start out on a seven string, right? You start out on a six string, you just learn all the proper techniques and such. But what I encourage you to do is continue to play some of that stuff on your seven string guitar. And here's why, because if you don't, and this kind of goes back to, where's my notes here? This kind of goes back to ignoring the other strings. That was mistake number two. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want to play those other songs, even if it's songs that you wrote or somebody else's, who cares? Just just play six string guitar songs on your seven string guitar so that you don't lose the sense of playing those other strings and those other notes. Because remember, just because you have a seven string, it doesn't mean you have to play that one heaviest string all the time. Expand, get away from that, you know? Play other stuff, learn your fretboard, you know, play those other strings and in other areas on the fretboard. 
play guitar solos. I'm kind of going over all the mistakes here, but you get what I'm saying. I just, I just don't want you guys to get so fixated on the low notes and okay, I've got the seven string now, so I've got to play this little style here. I don't want you guys to box yourself into that tiny little space when you have this whole arena of your fretboard to explore. Remember, the biggest thing here, guys, is having that extra string that just gives you more options. So use them. I'm not saying don't play heavy. I'm not saying don't gent. Well, I'm kind of saying don't gent, but you know, that's just my personal preference. I'm not saying don't, you know, use your seven string what you got it for, you know, for what you got it for, and that was to play heavier notes or lower notes. I get that. But just don't let that box you in that you neglect the rest of your guitar because then you step away from being a true musician and a true guitar player and you're just this little thing over here now because that's all you do all the time. In the beginning of this video, I told you I would share something with you at the end here and we're there. And I told you, you might not like this very much. You, um, hopefully you still like me, but no, seriously, you might not like what I'm about to say, guys. I am actually uh, toying around with the idea of getting rid of my seven string guitar. Now, it has nothing to do with the actual guitar. This, this what I have here is an ESP E2 Horizon FR7. It's one of the guitars that ESP makes in the factory in Japan. So this is a top-notch seven string. I mean, if I was gonna have a seven string, it would be this one, and well, uh, I have it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm considering getting rid of it. I'm considering uh, not being a seven string guitarist anymore. This is something that I've kind of gone back and forth on since I've had this, which has been well over a year now. In fact, I recorded an entire album with this guitar. It's called Masterpiece. I'll put a link up there to uh, one of the lyric videos for that album. And I'll put a link there in the description of this YouTube video as well so you guys can check that out. You know, the thing is, and I'll, I'll go more in depth in another video on this later, but the thing is, I don't feel like I've ever really become one with this guitar uh, or with seven string in general. I don't feel married to it. I feel like it's like, just kind of a rocky relationship here. And um, you know, every time I go to pick up one of my six string guitars, it's just like, oh, I'm back home. And I think maybe that's just a lot of the old school thrash metal style slash hard rock style that I'm used to playing. And I kind of miss that. And I just don't get that same feel, sound and tone out of playing a seven string guitar. I haven't made the decision yet. I will keep you updated on this decision, by the way. This is like something I just go through about once or twice a month. And I'm starting to go through that more often than not these days. That's just something that, you know, I wanted to share personal with you. I always share my personal stuff with you guys because you guys that are watching my videos, especially if you've been watching, um, you know, if you're this far into this video and you're still hanging on, you are the part of my audience that I truly appreciate. I mean, I appreciate everybody who watches my channel, don't get me wrong, but if you're still watching this video at this point, uh, I know that you're very engaged in my content and I want to thank you for that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you have any thoughts, guys, please feel free to leave those in the comments. You know, I, I try to respond to everything. I uh, haven't been able to see a lot of comments lately, but then I went to another place on YouTube on the back end and I saw, oh, here's all the comments I haven't responded to. And I'm like, holy crap, I've missed a lot. So I'm trying to catch up on all these, but uh, now I know where to go to see those. So if you comment on this video, I will definitely comment back at some point. But hey, thanks for watching this video. I really do hope these seven mistakes. I hope these help you in some way. Again, I know a lot of this was kind of comical and maybe I was being a little animated uh, in some of these mistakes, but there are also just some things that I've thought about over the years of me playing seven string and in here and other seven string players and just kind of the whole thing with where model, modern metal uh, has been going lately. And you know, to each their own as far as styles of music go. I mean, I, I'm not gonna be one to say, well, you've gotta like my subgenre of metal, cause I like a lot of different subgenres. Some I don't care for, but that's okay. You know, you may like some things I don't like and vice versa. Listen, I like 80s pop music. You guys might not like that. So, you know, it's just one of those things. But anyway, you know, I just, um, I kind of feel myself going back to my roots in my own guitar playing 
with that thrash metal and hard rock sound and um, you know stuff that's going to kind of fit my lead guitar playing as well because I do a lot of instrumental metal as well and I want to write leads that are going to be melodic and, and really captivating so anyway all that kind of ties in together guys at this point I'm rambling so I'm gonna end the video thank you again so much for watching this thank you for all the support you've given my channel I recently hit the 10k sub mark so I'm like on cloud I should say cloud 10, not cloud 9, because we're at 10K. Anyway, so thank you for watching, guys. Until the next video, as always, keep it metal.